Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study at VWC. I am your host and navigator and friend, Sister Toy. And we have a wonderful word prepared for you tonight. And before we get into our lesson, we're going to do some praise and worship from our awesome, wonderfully blessed praise and worship team. They're going to draw you right into the presence of God, and we're going to be prepared for the word. Amen. Keep that spirit of worship because we are honoring a good God on today. He's wonderful God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and put your hands together. Almighty, Almighty incredible, incredible, amazing.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, before we get started tonight, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for tonight, Father God. We thank you that you met us here, Lord God. Father, we thank you that your word shall go forth, Father, with power and demonstration, Lord God, with clarity of speech, Lord God, with signs following God. We thank you, Lord God, for this time of intimacy, Lord God, that we get to spend with you, Lord. Even though we're not together in the sanctuary, Lord God, we're together in spirit, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that your words will fall upon good ground, Father, and shall change hearts and minds, Father, and take us on into our next level of our purpose, Father. In you, in the name of Jesus, amen. All right. So tonight, we're going to talk about the blessing. Um, this is a subject I have never in my life since I've, you know, the opportunities I've had to teach the word, never have I conferred with flesh and blood on about what to teach. Uh, when I was asked to teach, Pastor Murphy never tells us what we, what we are to teach. He just trusts us that we hear from God. And but this particular subject, when I was asked to teach a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, um, and once God showed me what he wanted me to talk about, I conferred with flesh and blood. I'm like, really, God? Really, God? That? I didn't want to talk about it. Not right now because of you know, the, the atmosphere of it. It's always been a, a controversial subject, but I have to obey God. So the title of my message tonight is The Blessing, but we're actually going to be, the subject matter is The Tithe. So Pastor Murphy did, did uh, briefly uh, touch on it uh, after Sunday service, so we're going to piggyback off that and go from there. So the tithing, a few points here, tithing was instituted before the law. Abraham uh, tithed before Moses gave the commandments. So tithing is not under the law. It was given before the law came. Tithing is an act of worship. It's a sacrifice. Um, it's a sacrifice. You know, you got, it's, it's a sacrifice. Anytime you're sacrificing something to God, it's, it's, a, it's worship. Uh, just like he told Abraham to go and uh Go, go up on you know, the mountain and take his son Isaac to worship him. And he would show him what the sacrifice was. It's a sacrifice. And sometimes sacrifices hurt. It was going to hurt him to sacrifice his son, but he was going to obey God. Tithing is worship because it's a sacrifice. When Moses gave the law or the commandments, tithing had already been instituted. But under the law, uh, well, tithing was it carried on through the law. But the, under the law, there was a curse attached to it. However, we are no longer under the law, but under grace. However, we can still tithe and reap the benefits of it. Amen? Amen. Well, I like benefits. <laughs> and tithing is a principle, an accepted or professional rule of action or conduct, a fundamental truth. So God began to take me back over my life. And, and he began to remind me, because some of these things I have forgot, all the things he's done in my life because, I, because I'm a tither. When I first got saved, which was, it's been a while ago now, uh, and the church I was going to then, uh, the preacher was preaching, he was teaching on tithing. And I was just so glad to be out of the world and off those drugs and doing everything I was doing. I heard the preacher say, talk about tithing. I'm like, oh, oh t do that? 10%? Okay, good. Uh, at the time, uh, I, I worked in General Motors, but I had been laid off for so long. I was, I had ran out of all my benefits I, and I was on A to ADC. They called it back then, A to dependent children. And before I came to the Lord, it didn't seem like it, it was very little money to begin with. But before I came to the Lord, it just absolutely was not enough money because I had to sell my food stamps out of it. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm being real and being transparent. Uh, you know, to get my drugs. Um, so therefore, you know, we were skimping on food, you know, and stuff like that. And, uh, and you know, not paying my bills right or whatever, because I, you know, I'm doing my thing, my awful thing. Uh, but when I got saved, I realized, wow, this is enough money. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough money to, to pay the rent, to pay the little light bill. And there was enough food stamps. It was more than enough food stamps. 
We, when, when we quit, I quit messing up, we was eating steak and drinking pops. But anyway, so out of one check, there'd be, uh, you know, you get two checks, two checks a month. So out of one check, there would be $10 left because they gave you money to buy your toiletries and things like that. And out of the second check, it would be $12 left. I remember that distinctly. And that went on in, our life, in my life for a while. And like I said, the preacher was talking about tithing. And so I, I would tithe out of that $10 and $12. 10% out of a dollar, I'm out of $10 is just a dollar. 10% out of $12 is just a dollar and 20 cent. So after doing that for a couple of months, I'm like, God, I, I could I, be honest. I didn't see no, no different, no change or nothing. So we at, we at church one Sunday um, and the, the praise leader, she was singing and I'm singing too. I got my hands raised. I got my eyes closed. When I'm having this conversation with God in, in my heart, you know, about the tithe. You know, I'm questioning God about the tithe. You know, God, this ain't working. And I'm steady singing and praising God. So there was a point in the song she was singing where it, the, uh, the song was, uh, I've rendered unto you so faithfully. And I heard God distinctly say, I've rendered unto you faithfully, haven't I? I went, oh, God, yes, you have. And I put that dollar, a dollar 20 cent in, in, in the offering bucket. Now, that's not a lot of money, but it was a whole lot of money back then when all I had was 10 or 12. And so in 2 Timothy, verse 2, uh, chapter 13, Amplified says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, true to his word and his righteous character, for he cannot deny himself. So what I got out of that was God is faithful. And again, I'm questioning him about the tithe, not the offering, but the tithe. And again, when I came into the Lord, I became a tither right away. Without question. Well, in the beginning, without question. Okay, so life is carrying on. Um, we get our job. You know, I get my job back. My, me and Greg, my husband, we get married. And, you know, good things are happening, you know. And, and we're tithing 10%. We've always been tithing. Well, I've always been a tither. He kind of came along later. Uh, but he was a giver. And so, Again, you know, uh, some, a, a few couple years later, I'm questioning God about the tithe again. I, I guess you could say I backslid a little bit on the tithing issue. And um, and and if you be honest with yourself, who out there has is a tither and hadn't have haven't have, haven't had questions about the tithe? Or if you're a sower, you haven't had questions about that either. You know, a giver. But anyway, so I I got more questions, God, about the tithe. So I shut myself up in a room. For three days, I only came out that room to um, cook and clean or whatever. Um, I, it was over a weekend, so I was off work. So, and we had back then, it was you know what it wasn't uh, no cell phones where I could just you know tap 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 and and go to my strong concordance on the app and look up words. No, I had the big old big old thick strong concordance, and I'm looking up every word I can find in relation to tithing. I would uh, read the word for an hour and I would pray in the Holy Spirit and with the understanding for an hour for three days. I was hungry, <laughs> but I was determined to get an answer from God. God, what's up with this time? Because, again, I went back to, you know, God, you know, make it work. And so after after two and a half days, I'm like, shoot, God, you ain't said nothing to me. And I know I'm praying and fasting and talking to you. So I came downstairs and Greg, my husband, he was laying on the floor looking at a, a Billy Graham crusade. And uh, there was this guy testifying how he, he seen Billy Graham's uh, picture on, on a bus go by. And he went to the crusade and he got saved. And he was just praising and thanking God because uh, he was in, in one state, his wife was in another state, and the kids were somewhere else. I don't remember why. And God, I heard God plainly say, I did that for you. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got my answer. My question was in regard to the tithe. His answer was in regard to what he had done for me because of it. Uh, Malachi 3 verses 8 through 11 says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed me? Have we, have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Now, we are blessed whether we tithe or not. That was under the law that he said that. We are, we are blessed. I'm sorry. We are blessed if we, when we tithe or because we tithe. 
but we are not condemned or cursed if we don't. But verse nine does say that you are cursed with a curse. We have arrived and even this whole nation. But again, we are now under grace. We are not cursed. Verse 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. OK, so we're not we're not you don't have to tie. But. Don't you want the, the, the but we still want the benefits of the tithe. The benefits are the store, the storehouse of the church still needs meat. The bills still have to be paid. You can do that with an offering. And we still want the windows of heaven opened and the blessing poured out, right? Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And it could say in there, and I will restore your family or keep the devil out your family, because that's what he did to me. We still want the devourer rebuked and our belongings and assets kept safe. We still want the benefits of the tithe. He rebuked the devourer for, for me and the sake of my family. And God knows I am grateful. Is anybody out there grateful? Somebody write it in, in the comments. I'm grateful, God. Amen. Uh, OK, another testimony. Some years go by and now I'm, I'm firm in the tithe. I ain't got no more questions. I'm firm in it because even though when I had questions, I, I was still a tither and 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 began to give offerings on top of that. So I would say, and, and now me and my husband both, every Sunday we, we write out a check um, for, for our tithe and offerings. So I would say we're on the level of, of giving uh, 11 or 12% and sometime more of our income. And we've been that way for years and years now. Uh, so I believe that's on the level that we receive. So, um, so okay, so again, some years go by and uh, I'm working in the shop. Uh, and I can't remember why, but I needed to take a day off something. I can't remember what it was. It was something very important. And, but I didn't have any days, any paid days off, but some years went by, but we still in, in that mode of, you know, catching up, you know? And, uh, so I needed to take a day off, but I need, I was going to need that money next week to, to pay, pay bills. So, um, I, I put in for the day off work, you know, we wrote out our tie check. So again, we in, 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 in the house of God, praise and worship, you know, I got my hand lifted up, you know, the, pre the preacher praying over the offering, but I'm saying to God, God, you know, I, I, I need this money. You know, we need this money, but I'm trusting you, God, put it in the bucket. And so. I went to work. I missed my, you know, and when the day came, I missed my, you know, I took my day off of work and, you know, and so the next week we get our checks. I open my check up. I know the money ain't there. I don't know. <clears throat> I'll take that back. I'm praying it's there because I already prayed. But, you know, I, I, I admit I wasn't sure. So I opened it up and there was no the money. They paid me the money that I, 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 for the day I missed our work. So I don't, but I don't want anything that don't that God didn't give me if God didn't give it to me I don't want it so I called the supervisor I said hey look you remember you know I took the day off of work and I didn't have a day off I said I just want to let you know he said well you know what if you know I'm gonna have to do some paperwork to rectify that he said I don't want to be bothered with it don't worry about it I'm like thank you Jesus hallelujah the tithe was working for me the tithe was working for me amen um, Matthew verse chapter six, verse 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I put God first and, and what I needed was added to me. So I got more, but I, 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 and please, you know, as I'm talking, if, if you don't tithe or if, if, if you don't tithe or, or if you're not, uh, well, if you don't tithe again, Tithing is not, uh, there's not a curse attached to uh, if you don't tithe. We're not cursed if we don't tithe. Uh, tithing was given before the law came and it, 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 it was, uh, the, the curse was attached to it under the law. But again, we're not under law anymore. So 
if you tie, if, if you tie the 10 percent, that's between you and God. I'm just here telling you how the tithe has worked for me in my life. If the tithe has worked for you in your life, somebody put in the comments, my tithe is working for me. My tithe is working for me. My tithe is working for me. I believe it's God's plan. You know, but according to your faith, be it unto you. No condemnation. No judgment. In Jesus' name. Uh, and then another time. We had, by now, you know, we progressed in our, in our, uh, in our financial lives. Um, you know, we're, we're living and, you know, doing the word and the will of God as best we can, according to his plan for us. And, and we began to acquire some rental property. We were out of debt. Well, we had, we had, got, we had worked our way up to get out of debt. We started from, didn't have nothing. When, when I got saved and, and the first time I went to the church house, it was in the dead of summer. And I had on... <laughs> I had on some uh, velour knickers. Anybody remember that? I had on some velour knickers and a sweater. And it must have been 85 degrees outside. But I was determined to go and, and give, God, give my life to God and live for him because I was tired of living the way I was living. And I believe that's why I just embraced the message of tithing. And, and everything, I embraced everything the preacher said. You know, before I even started really studying the word of God for myself, I just embraced the things of God. And... Not to belittle anyone, but that that man of God, he was not even uh, doing right with the money. But let me tell you something about preachers that don't don't do right with the money, because I know sometime some of us, well, all of us, when it come, comes to what's going on with the money, people want to know. People want to know, and you need to know. I thank God that that here, you know, we know what's going on with the money. You know, the pastor lays out the vision once a year, and I don't believe they deviate from that. Praise God. Um, but I tell you what, when you sow your seed, okay, if they don't right with the money, like they supposed to praise God, if they not doing right with the money, that's between them and God, but your offering and, and what you reap from it, that's between you and God. It's a vertical relationship. I had some, <laughs> it's a vertical relationship. It's a vertical relationship between you and God. And God is going to bless you according to what you've sown. You're going to reap. And it has nothing to do with this uh, Jack Lake preacher that ain't doing what he's supposed to do with the money. You find out he ain't doing right with the money. Well, you got a right to get up and leave. But I tell you what, all the seeds you sown before you found out, you, God will bless you according to that. Amen. So anyway, we, had, uh, we, we, we were out of debt. I, I, you know, I believe God, because of the tithe, he said he will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive it. Part of that blessing is wisdom, wisdom. There's a wisdom that, that's attached to the tie. And God gave us the wisdom on how to get out of debt. And then he gave us wisdom to how to begin to acquire property. And so we, well, we acquired, we, at one time we had quite a bit of it. And so um, one, of, one of the properties we had, we, 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 uh, Put some, we, we, we put some money out of it. Actually, we put some money out of, out of our home to uh, get started with the property. And, you know, we got money coming in, rolling in, and I'm a shopper. You know, so I'm shopping, you know, I'm paying bills, but I, I, didn't, I didn't always do right with, with the money. And not, nothing of uh, being disintegrous, but I, like, I was, I was in, really into buying things, you know, spending more money than I should. And so... Um, so we need, so it, and, and, and plus, you know, you got to have money aside to, to, to pay your mortgages and bills, you know, and people don't pay the rent and all that. So we had, it had got to the point where it was like, it looked like we're going to go under because here I got all these bills over here and I don't have no money to pay them. We had already had two lines of credit and um, I called the bank to get another one and they said, we only do two. You can only get two. And nobody else would, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, wasn't, wasn't nothing left to do but keep tithing, keep praying, keep praising, keep worshiping God, keep trusting him, keep speaking the word. So it's like I said, it's down to the wire. I think we only had like a week or two before it was just the bottom was going to fall out. So I'm sitting in the bed one day, I'm just praying, and I heard the Lord say, go back to the bank. 
I'm like, okay. They already told me, you know, no, we're not doing this. But the, the Holy Ghost said, the plane is there, and I heard him, go back to the bank. So I go back to the bank. And the guy said, I told him, I, I told him, he said, yeah, we do that. It was, uh, I don't know who that guy was. But, you know, and he, he's not the only one that had to deal with the paperwork. You fill out the paperwork at, in, in, the, uh, in the bank, but it's got to go to a couple different places. It's got to go to underwriting and a few other places. So it went right on through. And bang, you know, they, uh, got it. But they sent, uh, you know, they sent uh, an appraiser out to appraise this one property that we were pulling money out of. And the appraiser turned to me and he said, how much money do you want? What? You know, do that. What appraiser does that? How much money do you want? I told him uh, it was $64,000. I'm not bragging. I'm just being open and honest and sharing what God has done for me because of the tithe. Or because of our level of giving, 10, 11%, put it like that. And so he said, okay, and that's what we got. So we only paid 12000 for the property. <laughs> and then uh, we sold it a, few, a couple years later. You know, we took care of our business. We got out of debt again, blah, blah, blah. And then, then we sold it and made money off of it. Um, Revelation chapter 3, verse 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. The bank said no, but God said yes. God will open a door for you that no man can close, and he'll close doors for you that no man can open. Amen. God opened it. The bank said no. There was nothing else I could do but just go to God. Go to God. Keep on tithing, keep on being obedient, keep on doing what I know to do. I, when, whenever I'm believing God for something, I remind, I always remind God, God, I'm a tither. God, I'm a tither, and I think that you're going to meet my need and whatever else I need to say. In Jesus' name. He has, he has never, God has never failed me yet. He has never broken that one promise. And I, who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? I am so glad. I'm glad that, that the message I heard for me was about the tithe. Um, and I believe that's how God is blessing us is on the percentage that we put in, put in, put in the ground in, in, into the kingdom of God. God don't need your money. God don't need your money. God, God owns everything in the earth. The cattle on a thousand hills, hills are his. Everything in the earth, everything above the earth belongs to God. He don't need our money. He needs our heart. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Our treasure is, is in our money. So does money, you know, some, I think God wants to know, uh, does money have you? Does money have your heart or do I have your heart? Amen. Somebody put in the comments, God has my heart. God has my heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and while we, and, and another thing, another testimony, uh, we, while we were in the buying property at the time, there was this one little house we saw and you know, it needed, it needed just a little bit of work, not a lot, but a little bit. And so they were asking, you know, way overpriced. And so we came along, we put in our little bid and, and the, the realtor said, no, they're not going to take that. Okay. Well, we forgot about it. So 30 days later, that realtor called me and she said, do you still want that house? I said, yes. She said, well, the bank going to give it to you. I said, what? What you say, lady? She said, the bank going to give it to you. They, uh, but they're going to give it to you, but you got to pay at least a dollar. When you do a quick claim deed, um, that's really just, you know, giving somebody the property. But it, it, has, to, it has to be uh, at least one dollar has to change hands. I'm like... I couldn't believe it. Who? The bank gave away a house, gave us the house. We took it. And hey, and we, and we made money off that house too. Um, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse 11 says, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, 
to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses. For God gave us a house that we didn't build, that we didn't pay for. Verse 11, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Amen. Who wouldn't want a free? I, I like free stuff. I don't mind paying for stuff. We was, you know, the price that I want to pay. But free is better. No, no strings attached. Just here. I guess that in the natural, I guess they wanted to get it off their books for some reason. I don't know what was going on. I don't even care what was going on. I know I benefited from it. And all I did was had somebody show me the house one day. She wasn't even my realtor. I didn't have one at the time. But, you know, her name was the lady's name was on the sign, you know, and gave us a house. I forget how much it was worth. But it was worth uh, several thousand dollars more than a dollar. Amen. 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 Okay, another another thing that happened. Uh, we went to uh, St. Thomas, Virgin Eyes. We've been there twice. One time we went on a cruise and the second time we went back. Uh, they have what's called Carnival uh, every year in April. And... Um, I don't know. It's a time of a festive time for them, you know, a time of food and a, they have a, a, a long a all day parade. The people, most of the women that's dressed up in different costumes. And and that's kind of a test who got the best costume and uh, 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 bands walking down the street and all. That. I mean, it's just really a nice time. So we went uh, It was somebody in the family's birthday. And so, you know, we went. And so uh, we had booked it well in advance and it was a. Uh, it was a package deal, I think. Anyway, we had the rooms we booked were in the Best Western, which is right by, if I remember right, it was supposed to be right by the um, the airport. So when we get there, uh, we find out they didn't overbook. They overbooked the Best Western because I mean, it's people come from all over during that time of year, and 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 they the substitute was the Marriott five star hotel. We paid for the. <laughs> We paid for the Best Western, but we got upgraded. We got booted. And the substitution was the Marriott, which is a five-star hotel. Overlooking the, the balcony, it was overlooking the ocean. We slept every night with the doors open, listening to the ocean, the waves of the ocean. And also, you know, we had paid for a rental car. Again, though, when we get there, all they got, they had plenty of, uh, there was these little Jeeps that didn't have no, um, no roof. And, and it was hot. The sun was blaring down. And so the guy that was taking us to our, our rooms at the hotel, he's riding in a, a, a Ford, some kind of Ford SUV that they had that was popular back then. I can't remember what the name of it was. And so we ride, you know, we like, we was grumbling, like, we don't want to ride. We seen them Jeeps. They look fun, but it was too hot to be riding with nothing over your head. So I thought, you know what? I said, sir, why can't we rent this? He said, because I'm driving this. You know, I, he had this excuse. I said, well, call the manager then. I'm big on somebody call. Let me talk to the manager. <laughs> I'm big on that to get what I want, get what I need. I said, well, well call the manager, the supervisor, and ask him, can we get this vehicle right here? Because it wasn't just me and Greg. It was uh, a couple other couples. And so he called and, you know, they talking and they hagging over it. And I'm, and I'm there, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I'm a tither, God. I thank you, Father God, that I'm abiding in you and your word abides in me, God. And, I, and whatever I ask you for, you do it for me, God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we kept riding, you know, and he said, you know what? They said, you can have a life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like I said, everything I believe God for, I remind God that I'm a tither. Remind God who you are when you believe in him for something. And you will reap what you sow. You will reap. We reap according to what we sow. That's what the Bible said. Amen. Verse four. So, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. Amen. I can't think of where it's at right now. God gave us favor. God gave us favor. He gives you what you ask for. Just ask. And have confidence that because you've sown your seed, because you, you're a tither, that you're going to get what you ask for. 
you reap what you sow. He, he gives us our best when we give him our best. Give God your best. And again, I, as I'm sharing my testimonies about what God has done for us, me and my husband, because we are tithers, I, I don't mean to sound uh, downputting or, dis, or, or discouraging anyone who doesn't tithe or give 10% or whatever. But I pray that, you know, if you want more, give more. If you want to go to another level in God, give more. If you're already giving 10, 12 percent, try it. Give, 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 give another percent, another half percent. Go, in, go higher. Because I tell you what, you can never, you will never outgive God. And that ain't going to happen. There's no such thing. We will never outgive God. Amen. Write in the comments, I can't outgive God. I can't outgive God. Write in there also, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Who out there want to be blessed? Amen. I know I do. Um, then another time I, I had a, 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 a mink coat. Uh, this coat, this style of coat, it, this is a bad coat. This was a bad coat. It had a shawl collar. It was a swing coat. It was a mink, a brown or a sable or whatever it was. And it came to the floor. I seen a cousin of ours with a coat like that on years before. And I always wanted a coat like that. And so, I don't know, a couple years ago, I'm looking on eBay messing around. And there was that coat. I'm like, oh, God. It was only $1,500. Well, that was a lot of money, but it was $1,500. And so I, um, no, that was $2,700. And so I said, God, that's my coat in the name of Jesus. God, I'm a tither. That's my coat. So um, I, t I, I emailed the contact the person. I said, well, not eBay if you, have, you, you got a bid or something like that. And it's on there for so many, so many days or hours. And so I sent the lady, because uh, you can contact the owner of the things through eBay. And I sent her a message and I said, well, if it don't sell, would you be willing to sell it for $1,500? She said, yeah. Or he said, whoever it was. And lo and behold, guess what? It didn't sell for the $2,700. So she told me I can get it for the fifteen. dollars uh, But before I did that, I, I, um, I, I, I talked to a furrier out on Dirt Highway next to the skating rink. And I sent him pictures. He said, yeah. Okay. He said, well, ask to see what it looked like on the inside, the lining. And so he, oh, I did that. The pictures look good. He said, it's good. So when I got the coat, I took it out there to him. He said, oh, yeah, this coat is perfect. But it seemed like as soon as I got that coat, I kind of felt like, mm, God, you ain't going to let me keep this, are you? I just knew it. God was going to make me, well, he don't make you do nothing. I just knew God was going to have me get that coat away. I'm like, oh, man, God. I want that coat for, my, for me. <laughs> so sure enough, and you know, because of that, I wouldn't even hardly wear it. I wore it a few times. I, I'm like, yeah. but you know, because I knew, but you know, I guess I was, got out of faith because if God tell you to get something away, you best believe he got something in store for you bigger and better and greater. So we can't hold back. So I, um, sure enough, I had about two years. I didn't wear it too much, but I would wear it to church. Sometimes, sure enough, we had church one Sunday and, and God said, give it to her. I didn't even know the lady. I'm like, oh man, I started crying. <laughs> I started crying. And I told so-and-so, I took, I said, look, get after that lady over there. And, you know, that was my coat. She had my name embroidered in and everything. I, I don't know where that lady had with my coat. Well, her coat. So... Wouldn't you know about, I don't, maybe a few months later, my oldest daughter, she bought some, she bought some coats, new coats. And one of them, she bought it, she didn't like it. She said, Mama, here, you can have this coat. And it was, it was, she paid a lot more for that coat than we paid for the one. I didn't ask her for that coat. She didn't know I had, I didn't tell them, I didn't tell them kids I gave that coat away. Uh, but she said, Mama, you want this coat, girl? Yeah, give me that coat. And, it, and it's a beautiful coat. I love that coat. But see, I, God wanted to make sure because he knew how much I wanted that coat. I was in love with that coat. 
You know, but God want to make sure you, we can have things, but we got to make sure things don't have us. So God saved me from that coat, I guess you could say. But anyway, so I gave the coat away in obedience to God. And uh, some months later, I got another coat and I still got that coat. He didn't tell me I had to get out of the way. Praise God. But, uh, you know, God know where I'm at, but he, he, God know where we at, what's in our heart. But we need to know. We need to know. So I, I tell you the truth, though, I lamented over that coat for a minute. I must be honest, but I had to get my heart right with God because God, God, uh, he only means us good. He, he has our best interests at heart and he want to make sure we're not going to never get into nothing that that's going to hurt or harm us. You know, are we talking about, well, I guess we're talking about money. You know, money is not the root of our evil. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. God want to make sure I wasn't in love with the thing more than I was in love with him because I really did like that coat. Uh, Galatians chapter six, verse seven says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man soweth that shall he also reap. I reap what I had sown. I had, I believe God again. I told God because I'm a tither. I, I, I'm claiming that coat. I want that coat. Not that I was coveting, but you know, cause I, you know, I just talked to the lady. She said, yeah. And she didn't sell it. So, and I got that coat, got that coat. You know, uh, again, um, uh, the, again, the tithe, it, it has tripped a lot of us up, you know, in, in the thinking that, I don't know that we've talked about too much. I'm not going to say that because every time I hear about it, it just increases my faith. Every time I hear somebody talk about the tithe, it increases my faith. I've never felt like that. Uh, he or she talking about the tithe too much. No, it increases my faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How else are we going to increase in faith? If we don't hear the word of God, you need healing. You need to hear the word of healing continuously, continuously. You need some money. You, you need to hear the word of tithing continuously. Whatever you need from God, that's, that's the word you need to hear continuously. God said it. I didn't. Faith comes by hearing. So I hope I ain't lost nobody. <laughs> I'm talking about the tithe. And like I said, I didn't really want to talk about it. But either you're going to obey God or you ain't. Uh, another time, um, somebody did me wrong. I'm not going to, cause it's kind of personal. So I'm not going to get real deep into it, but somebody did me wrong some years ago, several years ago, a lot of years ago, and it was involving some money and okay. Oh, well, you know, you did what you did. You didn't do what you're supposed to. I'm not going to ask you. It's just, you know. Water under the bridge, I guess, you know, God is my provider. God meets my every need. I lack for nothing and come behind and no good thing. I'm a tither and I do give offerings. So, um, yeah, so it was involving money and okay. So, uh, years later a after what had happened, um, this person that, that did me wrong, they encountered there, there was an encounter with someone who, who, who knew me and they said, well, you know, when you see her, give her this, gave me $500, sent $500. I said, really? <laughs> give it here. And what's their number? Let me call them and tell them thanks. You know? So me and this person got on the phone. Hey, how you doing? You know, we reminisce and I, I'm not even, I forgot all about it. Sort of. But, you know, I don't know if you ever forget, really forget anything, but, you, you know, you can be so far removed from something that you only think about it every once in a while. So when the person gave me the $500, I'm, then I remembered, you know, of course. So I'm talking to the person who sent it. Um, hey, we just shooting the breeze. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. You know, and they said, well, yeah. Well, and I thanked them for the $500. And they said, well, I'm, I'm going to keep sending it. So for about. I would say it was at least a good five years that I got $500. I got, I got 
in my Zelle account every month for about five years straight because I'm a tither. And God meets my need. Hallelujah. He's never failed me yet because I'm a tither. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. He restored what he, God will restore that which has been stolen from you. Trust him. Trust him. I encourage you. I'm not condemning you. I'm not putting you down, but I'm just encouraging you. Whatever level you give, soul tithe, or whatever you want to call it, come up to another level in God. God is always calling us to come to a higher level in him. Always, always. A higher level in your worship, in your praise, in our health. In God is always calling us higher. Amen. I already said that when I believe God for something, I remind him, God, I'm a tither. And it's just, uh, okay. With that being said, I'm always looking for the windows of heaven to be open because I'm a 10, I'm a 10 percent. I'm a 10 percenter tither. Uh, we are blessed when we tithe and not cursed if we don't just recap them real quick. We are blessed whether we tithe or not. But remember, we, we reap based on what we've sown. The tithe is 10%. And if you don't do 10%, there's nothing to feel guilty about or ashamed. Do according to your faith, do you. Tithing is not required, but again, you reap what you sow. What you give, what you give is between you and God, bottom line. Okay, with that, it's time to sow. Be happy about it. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Amen. It's time to sow. There are five ways to give, um, but by all means, give. Set your heart to give. And, and again, no condemnation, but believe God to come up a little higher in your giving. Wherever you're at in it, believe God to come up higher. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a little higher myself. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. That, you've, that you're always calling us to go higher in you, God. Hallelujah. You never leave us nor forsake us, God. You never let us be, be lack for nothing or come behind in no good thing because we gave to you first, God, in the name of Jesus. You always give, give us back, which, give back to us what we gave to you, Father. Multiply. You only add and multiply. You, you never subtract and take away, God. And for that, we thank you. We give you all praise and glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.